first off, how are you? How's the family? How's everyone close to you doing, holding up? Uh, yeah, no, everybody's good. You know, just uh, kind of figure it out like everybody else. But, uh, but we've been, you know, lucky enough where we're, you know, everybody's safe and healthy and hanging in there, waiting for this to hopefully be over soon. Good to hear. Um, you know, we all know, of course, that coaching is about a lot more than X's and O's and, and what we see from press row. Um, but no coach can be prepared for a pandemic. How have you and your staff kind of adjusted during the past nine months in terms of what you're providing for the guys on the team? Right, yeah. I mean, um, early on, you know, you were just trying to stay in touch as much as possible. You're used to, you know, when it hit, we were still in school. So, you know, you're used to seeing your guys every day, you know, whether it's down the hall, you know, with the um, – our academic coordinator, you know, in the gym or whatever. Um, but, you know, we were, we were all separated. So we were just trying to figure out ways to, you know, just stay engaged, figure out Zoom. I didn't know what Zoom was, you know, the, <laughs> the February. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, in everybody's account now. But, um, you know, figuring out ways to stay in touch, keep, keep everybody engaged, and, um, you know, figure things out as we're going along. You know, this, this year has been marked by you know, so much incredible anguish, tragedy, so many triggering events. Um, one thing that stood out to, to us, just watching from afar on social media, which has basically been you know, kind of the norm for us over this period, was the video that the guys put out in the wake of the George Floyd murder and the protests against race, racial injustice. It's pretty powerful. How did that all come together? Um, yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, I don't, you know, I don't have Twitter or anything, so it's not like I comment on, you know, stuff outside of, you know, AU and AU basketball and answering questions, you know, for you guys and stuff. Um, so when, when that happened, obviously everybody being a part, you know, played a part in it. You know, we, we didn't, like I said, we, we're not engaging with the team on a daily basis. Normally we, you know, we would seen everybody on campus you know go that day or the next day or that whole week um you know so as as things sort of progressed you know na nationally you know everyone sort of reacted to it you know we, we were you know talking to our team about it and we just tried to figure out hey what's something that we can do what's the best way to address it um and i didn't you know necessarily have an answer um, so, you know, I asked the team, you know, I asked the staff, I asked the team, and it was sort of a collective, you know, thing that everybody, they said, hey, this is what we want to do, and this is how we want to do it. And, um, you know, guys, a lot of autonomy, so I give them a ton of credit for, you know, coming up with, with an idea and, you know, executing and following through. Um, and it was powerful, I thought, you know, I thought, I thought everybody sort of, you know, was real honest, you know. Um, or bear, bear their souls, so to speak, you know. Um, so it was, it, it was good to see. It was good to see that sort of honesty from, from everybody. And normally, this would be a crazy question to ask, but when were you first able to even see any of the guys in person leading up to the season? I'd assume that there were a lot of postseason workouts done individually and done through video, but when were you actually able to get back in the gym with some of the guys? Uh, let's see, yeah, I mean, it took us a long time, and um, I, I mean, I give AU, you know, our department and the school a ton of credit because, um, I mean, one of the difficulties throughout the summer um, and, and the fall was um, sort of letting our guys know that, uh, you know, we're, we're being cautious, and the school's being cautious, and the department's being cautious, but it's, you know, it's in their best interest. You know, so we weren't necessarily trying to rush back and we weren't figuring out, well, how can we, you know, how can we have practices and lifts and do all this and get them back to campus? Uh, we weren't trying to find ways around it. We were just trying to find the safest way possible to, you know, take steps forward. Um, so we're, we're definitely sort of further behind, I think, um, even other schools in our league as far as you know, practice and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's, um, you know, it's, we were definitely forward thinking and I, I give uh, the school and the department credit. And, um, you know, we, we waited 
so we knew, hey, we, we felt safe, we felt comfortable, you know, um, bringing guys back. I mean, as I felt comfortable, you know, speaking to the team and their parents saying, hey, this is our plan. We feel good about it. Now, wouldn't ask you guys to come back if we didn't. Um, and I, you know, we gave everybody the choice. I said, hey, listen, you know, it's, I'm not, you know, you got to be here on this date and not, you know, uh, we, we got to get to work. It was like I wanted everyone to feel safe and comfortable with what was happening. Uh, so, I mean, Marvin and Jesse, you know, decided to sort of quote unquote opt out of the season. I don't know what the best phrase for that is. But, you know, they had concerns and legitimate concerns, and I understood that. And I told them, hey, you know, if that's how you feel and that's, you know, what you want to do, we have absolutely no problem with that. And, you know, we'll, you know, it's still part of the program. So, um, you know, uh, my, my battery's a little low. So I, <laughs> uh, um, but uh, to, to be honest, I forget, I'm, I'm, I, I, I forget the first day. Uh, mm -hmm. But today was our first full court practice, <laughs> just to give you guys a sense of the timing of this. Other, you know, obviously, you know, Navy and Army are playing games, and, you know, a lot of the teams are playing games and have been practicing, and some teams have been practicing since the summer. But today we, had, we literally had our first uh, full court practice. Now we've been in the gym and taking steps, you know, forward, like small groups and, you know, limited activity, but today was the first day. So the guys were excited to get up and down the court. And just for anyone listening or watching, today is December 14th. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hat off that practice today, Mike. What were your, what were your initial impressions of that first uh, full court uh, practice? I guess you are, you know, if things go as planned, and I'm kind of jumping ahead in our sequence of questions here, but what was what were your impressions of of your first practice, which I guess would be about two and a half weeks before your first scheduled game? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, just the, the the team has been great, you know, since they've been back. Um, I mean, their their work ethic, um, you know, just following all the protocols. I mean, we're asking a lot of these guys. They didn't get to go home for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, there's a lot of restrictions on, on what they're allowed to do. Um, so I give our guys a, a ton of credit for, you know, adhering to the guidelines and taking, you know, the process seriously. They they all realize that there's a lot of other people sort of making this happen on campus for them. Um, so I give them credit for for understanding that and um, you know doing that and doing their part. Um, and I was you know been not surprised by how well they've, you know, how hard they've worked, but it's, it's a really, really great group to work with. Uh, we've got great, you know, leadership from our older guys. Um, I really, really like the younger guys. So, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect today, but I was definitely pleasantly surprised with, you know, how many times they were just literally able to get up and down the court. You know, I, I was expecting us to be, you know, pretty dead tired after two minutes, but they, you know, they competed and, and played pretty hard. You could tell they were excited to go. Do you, do you and the staff uh, have to wear masks during during practices? What's kind of what are the ways that you guys are going about uh, that? Yeah, so it's been a slow build up, you know. So we start out, we all have to wear masks. Um, we started out there, you know, a certain number of people could only be in the gym at a, at a certain, at a, you know, a certain time. You know, started out with two kids at a basket, no coaches, sort of, you know, coaching from afar, mm -hmm. uh, which with the mask, you know, makes it a little more difficult for them to hear. Um, and the kids all have to wear a mask. They, you know, they wear masks uh, while they're playing, while they're practicing. Um, so, you know, there's been, you know, different phases leading up to today. Um, so we're still in mass, the coaches, um, so a coach can be on the court, but not all the coaches can be on the court at the same time. You can sort of get out there to demonstrate that you still want to be distance. Um, so we, we just have to be a little, you know, diligent about our spacing. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, we're, we're at least all in the gym together, um, you know, and going to a practice together. Wow, that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is incredibly difficult. Although, although I guess a guy could, 
could joke about, well, coach isn't going to get up in my face anytime soon. Right. <laughs> and I'm, you know, it's not like I'm in the guy's faces or anything, but uh, I do, I do yell a little bit. So that's uh, been muffled a little bit. So that, that might be a good thing. Uh, actually, Meg, our, um, you know, our women's head coach, she has a, a microphone that she uses. Oh, wow. So it was a, was a really good idea. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I know this would be an easier question to ask uh, the guys, but just from your perspective and your discussions with them, like, how are they doing with the, this arrangement? I assume that campus feels, you know, pretty isolated, pretty, pretty empty to them. Um, you know, and of course, they're away from their families. Like, has mental health been a concern? How, how have you tried to just kind of keep spirits up, I guess, in such a difficult time? Yeah, no, I mean, we try to have as many meals together and, um, you know, trying to occupy their time. That's a big thing. You know, they're, you know, they're in class, but it's all virtual and they're usually either in the rooms or, you know, just somewhere sort of by themselves, isolated. Um, so, and again, I mean, I, I give the, the, the kids a ton of credit because they, they have to do a lot of this on their own, you know, and, um, you know, they eat just eating, just their, their normal daily routine. It's, a, you know, it's, it's a task to, 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 to go through the normal routine. Uh, but we try to, you know, engage them as much as possible. And it, it's a mature group and, you know, they, they all like each other. Um, I think the older guys and the younger guys gelled well, so I think they're, you know, supporting each other um, you know, as much as possible. And, you know, it's, it's a group that gets along, which makes, you know, going through something like this, um, I don't want to say easier, but less difficult. I definitely, you know, I definitely want to get to some basketball specifics here in a minute, but, you know, we've all been watching uh, the past three weeks, you know, as every day, Every day there have been cancellations due to COVID. Uh, you know, Duke coach Mike Shashevsky the other day said he had serious questions about continuing, and obviously he's got quite quite the large microphone. Uh, we have the pretty serious situation with the kid from Florida who collapsed. It's uncertain, obviously, if that was COVID related, although he did have it. But just kind of taking into account, obviously, the fact that coaches and and players want to play and, you know, put so much hard work into the season, but also with what's going on, like, do you think that college basketball should be happening this winter? Um, yeah, to be honest, I don't think there's a right answer to that. And I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> to, be, to be completely honest, we haven't gone through a game. Um, you know, we haven't traveled somewhere to play somebody. Um, but I, I do feel that, you know, again, the university and the department have taken so many steps to, you know, they, they've covered so many of their bases where I think everyone does feel safe in, in the environment that we're in right now, mm -hmm. uh, as far as practicing every day. Um, and then, you know, obviously the season will be different. We're not staying in hotels, we're, you know, where it's all same day travel. Uh, we're getting tested right now. We're getting tested twice a week. Once the season starts, it'll be three times a week. Um, so I think we're we're doing everything we can to ensure it's as safe as possible. We're taking all the precautions that I think you know we should be taking and supposed to be taking. Um, how it'll play out, you know, who knows? And but I think we're <clears throat> I think we're we're doing you know taking all the right steps that we should to ensure safety. For you mentioned the schedule, you know, so the Patriot League is going to this regional mini conference model where you're only playing, you know, three or four teams that are closest, um, busing everywhere, you know, no overnight stays. And then, of course, the back-to-back -back games. Um, first off, I'm, I'm just curious, like, um, what input, if any, did, did you or other members of the staff at AU kind of play in that process? And what was that process like as far as – coming up with what the Patriot League schedule was going to be? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they always ask for our input. I don't know how much they listen to, to what, the, uh, what the coaches um, say. But, you know, it's obviously this is new for everybody. So I think all schools are just trying to, you know, do the best they can with the, with the circumstances. So, again, I don't think there's, a, you know, a right way or a wrong way. Um, 
you know, they, they came out with the schedule. It is what it is. So we, we all just have to adjust and, you know, just take advantage of the opportunity that we get to be out there competing. And play. You know, the Ivy League's not even playing its season. Right. You know, so as much as you want to point to everybody else is, you know, traveling around and playing, um, you know, we, we still get to go out and compete and play and, you know, hopefully play, uh, compete for a championship. So we just want to make the most of that opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, so speaking of the uh, of the schedule, have have you and the staff talked at all yet about strategies as far as playing in that back to back model, where you would you know have Loyola on a Saturday, you know at Loyola, and then have them again the next day at AU? Like, would you anticipate doing film sessions before you know between the two games, or is it more so just kind of noticing things throughout the game and then just implementing those adjustments and you know walk through the next day right yeah i just want to go back when i said that the coaches have input and whether the league listens to it. i don't think we have any great answers to be honest so it's not like <laughs> no it's not like we had the solution um as far as the schedule again it's um you know, it, 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 I'm having played and coached in the Ivy League, you know, we used to, you know, play back to back nights. Um, you know, and to be honest, back in the day, there used to be tournaments where you would play back to back nights, preseason tournaments. Uh, you know, there's still a few, but we haven't participated in any of that. Um, but again, it's, um, I, I, my, our focus is um, getting, we have a lot of young guys, a lot of new guys. So our focus has been getting them to understand what's important to us, you know, how we play, um, sharing the ball, playing together, you know, just the basics. So it's sort of emphasizing those things to our to our group because uh, we're going to rely on a lot of these young guys and new guys um, and just to get them to, you know, be able to compete and play, and, uh, you know, do it consistently. You know, so as far as the specifics of, back-to-back -back games at what time the travel you know it'll be difficult but it'll be difficult for both teams so um i think we just got to be you know know what we're doing all right and be ready to execute it and be ready to compute compete when when the time comes you know obviously you can't replace uh saeed nelson we all know what he did um that said you've got a highly regarded freshman point guard in colin smalls how is he progressing and what's kind of the plan to, I guess, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, collectively replace Saeed's yeah. guard presence? Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it is uh, collectively sort of do it. And even the word replace, like that, you know, like you said, it's, you're not going to replace him. Uh, that's 2,000 points and hundreds of assists, hundreds of rebounds, hundreds of steals, um, hundreds of stops, you know, guarding his man. I mean, he, he did so, so much uh, that you don't necessarily replace it. Uh, but I, I like our group's mindset. Um, you know, I think we're, we're sharing the ball. We're going to need other guys to, you know, quote unquote, step up, but, you know, just contribute and play and make plays. So I'm excited. I'm excited about Colin Smalls, and I'm excited about all of our freshmen and the new guys. But I'm, you know, just as excited for for Stacy to to do more, you know, for Jameer to do more, for Connor to do more, for Ben to do more, for Josh to do more. Um, and not that they weren't doing things, but it's just there's going to be so much opportunity, and you know, they're the guys that are now in charge of making us win. So they have to make the plays and get the rebounds and get the stops. And, and judging by their, you know, their uh, demeanor and their work ethic so far, I think, uh, I think they're, they're ready for that challenge and they're looking forward to it. Yeah, that brings up a, a great point is that, you know, in a normal season with a, with a huge freshman class as you have, you'd have two months of non-conference play to really – you know, get them some experience and, and test them out before the, the games that matter most. Obviously, that's not the case this year. Um, but as you, you've already alluded to, like, you expect these guys to contribute. So I guess the question is, how are you kind of approaching um, using 
the freshmen this year in this unprecedented season when it it seems like you're going to need a bunch of them but at the same time they will be they will play that first game against Loyola in the Patriot League without ever having played a game right yeah now they're um I mean I think understanding now that they're, they'll essentially not be ready you know and just being patient and you know knowing that and then and then making sure that they understand that too you know, I'm not expecting, you know, them to come in and get every stop and make every shot and everything's going to be perfect. Um, you know, it, but they are going to get their opportunities to be out there. Um, I mean, like you said, normal in a normal year, I mean, it's hard enough for freshmen uh, to come in and, you know, just sort of keep up for just a few minutes at a time in a game. And you normally have the entire summer to tell, hey, this is this is lifting weights. This is running up and down the court hard, and you know you, it's a gradual buildup where it's sort of everything is being thrown at them at once. I mean, we're you know going over our zone offense the same day as our man offense, same day you know playing full court, guarding the scout, scout report, you know. So it's just it's a lot on an, in a normal year for freshmen. So this year it's it's even more condensed. Um, so, but I, I like their mindset. Our guys, they, they pick things up quickly. You know, um, they, they, they have good basketball minds. So it's kind of forced me to, to kind of go, go, go a little quicker with some things with our teaching progression, but also understand that, you know, I gotta be patient. Um, you know, and I, so I just want them to understand, Hey, just play hard. Just try to do the things that you practice, do the best you can, and, you know, that'll be enough for me. And then hopefully they can help the, these older guys who do understand, hey, this is what it takes to win a game. You know, hopefully the young guys and the new guys can come in and just uh, contribute in any way that they can. Out of the new guys, you know, I mentioned Colin, but at, at this point, is is there – a guy from that group or two guys from that group that, who you think are most ready to step in and, and could play like a good chunk of minutes that, that first game? Uh, well, I think, I mean, much like, you know, like any season um, and like any freshman class, there's, you know, good days and bad days for all of them. So one guy, you know, might have a really good day one day and then, you know, it's just, it's, they're freshmen, you know, so they're not going to be great every single day. Uh, but I, I like them all because they all bring different things to the table. Um, you know, Collins had terrific days. Johnny O'Neill's had really good days. Matt Rogers has had, you know, excellent days. Uh, Christian Lorne, uh, the junior college transfer, been really good. No, man. <laughs> Hold on. You know, uh, let, let me – I got to go get – let me um, get my charger. Okay. Just because I this, my I got you on my phone and uh, I don't want it to run out of juice. Yeah. Once, once, sorry. No worries. No worries. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. 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 Hey, Tommy. <laughs> that, that's our cut. This is our cut sign. <laughs> All right. I don't have too many more questions. Uh, I think it's going fine. Yeah. He said he had no distraction or no hard outs. Nice. Nice. Crespo, who is that dog? All right, it's back. <laughs> you got me? Sorry about that. No, no worries at all. I was planning on doing it on my computer, but I was having computer issues. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, just a freshman, you know, who's going to play, who's not, who's standing out. You know, I, I, I mean, the good thing is they've all stood out at some point, um, you know, over and over and over throughout practice uh, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I think they're all going to play and contribute and be good for us. You know, Lorenzo Donadio is, you know, is a Italian guard. He's got good instincts and, you know, so I think they all have, you know, things that they can contribute and they're going to have to, you know, because it'll be hard for just for the, <clears throat> for the preparation, the amount of time that we've had to prepare for a game, you know, simply not enough. <coughs> so they're going to have to get in there and play. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, you know, we've only seen one year of Jameer on a basketball court, but it seems like he's been at American for, for quite a long time. And judging by what he says, he appears really you know, ready to lead. Um, he isn't shy about saying a Patriot League championship is the goal. Same thing he said a year ago. How has he, how has he grown since he's come to campus, Mike? And, and what do you really need from Jameer this year? Uh, yeah, now Jameer's been great, you know, as far as the leadership that we've needed, um, especially, you know, under the circumstances that, that we've been under for so long. Um, and, you know, he's a phenomenal shooter from a basketball standpoint. Um, but, I, you know, he's, be, he's not a one-trick pony. And we're trying to, you know, get him to develop, you know, other parts of his game just to make him, um, you know, more of a weapon. And I think he's, you know, he's really embraced that. And he, I mean, he talks, he comes with energy. He, he does all the things that you want your leaders to do, your upperclassmen to do um, on a daily basis. So you don't have to worry about them. You know, your, your focus can be on getting the younger guys and the new guys ready to help you. Um, you know, so re reliability, steadiness, all that kind of stuff. He, he, you know, him and the other guys have, uh, have definitely provided so far. Um, you know, Stacy, you know, played his first three seasons <clears throat> as complimentary player, you know, alongside, uh, Saeed. Um, and he's really grown tremendously into a complete player whose presence is clearly felt on both ends. With Saeed gone, what are the aspects of the game that you're, asking Stacy to ramp up even more his senior year. Yeah, no, I, th I thought he did a really good job at the end of last year of just being more aggressive about everything. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not necessarily one particular thing that, hey, Stacy, this is what you need to do. Um, you know, he's, he's got, you know, good skills, good instincts. Um, he, he did a ton for us, you know, last year, whether, you know, against William and Mary, he's guarding a seven-footer. You know, he's getting rebounds. He's uh, making defensive plays. Like, whatever we needed from him, it seemed like he wound up doing. Um, so now I think, you know, I think he's just more confident, more comfortable. Um, he understands what we need from him. Um, and I think the kind of guys that we get here, you know, it is a process. You know, there is, you know, growth each year. You know, guys, you expect them to get better. Um, you expect them to add to their game, to add, you know, the maturity, the, the level of responsibility, you know, all those things. So, you know, he, I mean, I, he had um, a couple plays today in practice that I hadn't seen him make or complete before. And so he's still showing signs of growth. So it's, it's you know, that's the fun part about this is watch, watching guys get better and continue to grow. You know, even your senior leader who's been around, who's played a ton of games, he was, uh, you know, whatever he was, all league, you know, third team or something, whatever it was. But he's still, you know, continuing to grow and get better. And and he's been more vocal and, you know, more talkative. And, you know, he's a pretty quiet kid. Um, he does a ton on the court. But we, you know, now we need him to just be more vocal. And he's, he's been doing that. Um, you know, Josh has had kind of you know, an up and down first two seasons. And of course, played mostly behind Mark, who's at uh, UMass now. Um, but he's the returning big with the most experience, and especially with Jesse opting out, you know, makes you a little more thin in the front court. What are your expectations of Josh? What what strides does he need to make? I'm not going to say one area. I'm just going to say strides in general. Is Josh? Yeah, right, player? right. Um, yeah, well, and you know what? If I mean. It was always not, I don't want to say a toss up, but I, I would have felt good playing him more last year. Like if we had to play him, you know, he's, he, I would have felt very comfortable with him, there, with him in there just because he competes, he goes after rebounds, um, he doesn't back down. Uh, but he's, he's a helper, you know, by nature and how he plays. So I think that, um, you know, just by the nature of our team, I think he fits well with everybody around him where he'll be able to help Jameer get shots. He'll be able to help Connor. He'll be able to help Ben and Stacy and everybody else. Um, and just, you know, just steadiness from him. Um, you know, so, and, he, you know, his game continues to grow. But, again, he's an upperclassman now, you know, and you expect, you know, freshmen and sophomores up and down, good days, bad days. Now it's we just need, you know, many more good days than bad. 
And so far, you know, they've all done that. They've all have, you know, had really good days over and over consistently so far. Like how, how have you and your staff kind of talked about expectations with guys for the season? Obviously, you know, in <clears throat> conferences like the Patriot League, like winning the league, getting to the tournament is usually the big goal. So I'm not saying that losing nine conference games is makes it easier for you, but does that make it, does that help us from an ex expectation standpoint that that goal of winning the Patriot League championship is still there? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you, you miss out on the, um, you know, the, the preseason games just because that's where you, you know, who competes, who goes after rebounds. You're not playing against, you know, your roommate or your, your buddy, you know, you're playing against somebody else. And you kind of have, you know, you get, you get to make some mistakes, you know, before it actually really counts. Whereas this year, you know, your first game is a league game. And we put, you know, everything on, you know, winning league games. Um, so, you know, it's I, I think the guys, you know, understand the importance of it. Um, and again, it's sort of us trying to, the staff balancing, um, placing this high, high importance on league games, but also understanding that we have to play, you know, have to play the freshmen, have to play the young guys, and it's not going to be perfect. So how can you, you know, balance that? How can you, you know, do everything you can to win the game, but understand that, you, you know, you got to put these guys in that are, that are it's not going to be perfect. Um, so it's, you know, it's an interesting balance. Uh, so I'll, I'll let you know on uh, January uh, 4th after we played two games. <laughs> how, how it's yeah, going. no, I mean, it, it, and I guess the other thing I would say there is it just seems to me like, hey, if you go out and win the Patriot League championship, that's just this, Sure, the schedule is, is really weird, but that still seems, you know, pretty darn legitimate compared to a regular year, where if you contrast that, you know, with what's going on in football, where like Ohio State's played five games, that just feels kind of off. Um, but I'm not here to make, we all know basketball is much better than football or any of them. <laughs> I'm not here to make comparisons. Um, you know, it, it appears clear that there won't be fans at the games. You know, right. heck, you know we'll, be, we'll be covering the games from our couch. How are you preparing guys for playing Patriot League games in basically, you know, empty gyms? Has that been something that's been talked about uh, to this point? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I think it would be the same as talking to them if, you know, you're playing in front of a big crowd. You know, I think once the game starts, you know, hopefully they're, they're thinking about the things that they should be thinking about, which is, you know, being where you're supposed to be on offense, guarding your man, getting back on D, boxing out, all the stuff, you know, uh, just playing basketball, you know. So I think it's it's similar where they just, you know, after it'll be different when they're, you know, I don't know if we're going to introduce them. Are we going to play music and you know, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Uh, but once that's over, once the ball, you know, once after the jump ball, you know, I think they'll they'll settle in and they'll they'll realize, hey, we're just we're doing what we normally do which is run up and down and compete and play. I mean, these kids, have, you know, they played in every gym across the country their whole lives and in front of people, not in front of people, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, these guys, they, they just want to compete and play and, and then, uh, you know, just uh, compete for a championship. Uh, it's December 14th right now, as we mentioned earlier, if you had to put out a starting five tomorrow, what, what can you tell us? Uh, well, it's the older guy. I mean, it's uh, right now it's Stacey Jameer, uh, Ben Connor, and Josh. So the guys that have been around, the guys that kind of know what you know what to expect and what you know what what I expect of them. Uh, but again, it's uh, it's going to be an all hands on deck uh, situation, certainly. And and again, I, I I like the entire team. You know, I like every single person on our team. I feel comfortable. You know, if I had to throw them in a game that they would, you know, by the time we're playing games, that they'd be able to, you know, contribute and, and help us. So, I mean, I'm excited, you know, that, I mean, the, the young guys, I, I really like, I really like this class. Mike, one final question just related to kind of the logistics of this thing. Have you been told yet, like, if there is a positive case within the team, what the protocol would be as far as, you know, quarantining and how many days the program you know might take off before the next game right yeah well I mean it depends on whether you know it's it was just one of our guys and 
you know, it's during a practice week or if it was after a game. Um, and then the rule, you know, the CDC, the rules continue to sort of change um, as far as how long you quarantine and all that kind of stuff. So um, it, it depends on when it happens and how it happened. You know, was, was it one of our guys and they were out together, you know, grabbing dinner? Was, was it one of our guys and he doesn't know where he came from or, you know, was it after a game? So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of variables involved um, and, it, and it changes, but we're, most importantly, we're, we're doing our best to not get it so we don't have to shut down because if you do, either one per even that either that person will be quarantined for you know 14 or 10 days or depending on you know how it was transmitted the whole you know a group of people could be shut down of the whole team so well I that mean, doesn't answer the question there's just a no, I get it I, I definitely get it a lot, a lot of moving parts that will continue yeah. to change to be honest well it certainly seems like you guys are taking all the necessary precautions and uh, first and foremost, just um, just you know, hope you guys are you know able to absolutely stay healthy and stay well um, during the course of this because these are crazy times and hopefully you know play out the entirety of the schedule as well. So um, you know, on the one hand, obviously it's exciting that basketball is back. On the other hand, there are all kinds of worries that go along with it. Yeah, last well, I mean, our goal, you know, hopefully we can just stay healthy and play all the games. I mean, that's the biggest. Uh, sort of goal right now so we're looking forward to it so but it's good to see you guys again yeah looks, same. Like, looks like we're forming a band we might <laughs> yeah I, I you know i played the drums growing up so <laughs> put me on the drums crespo knows knows the guitar well so what do you play nice nice oh man yeah we're, we're, we're in trouble if we actually are forming a band <laughs> <laughs> So right now it's excellent to see you guys and hopefully we get to see each other in person real soon here. Yeah. Right on. Good. Well, and if not, we'll see you again on Zoom in, in a few weeks here. All right. Okay. All right. Great, fellas. Thanks, well, appreciate it. Right. Appreciate you, uh, the continued support and we'll see you guys soon. Oh, so, so that was head coach Mike Brennan, of course. Great conversation with him. And now we have Sam Shortstop Healy with us. Who There's an act. We haven't seen on camera uh, for, or I, I should say by phone, because we usually don't do this by camera, but it's 2020 and we're in the middle of a pandemic and this is what you do. Um, so just to, to wrap this podcast today, uh, shortstop Healy, what is going on? What, what, is, what is new in Detroit, Michigan? Dude, Detroit, Michigan, the shortstop Sammy vintage closet brand is just growing by the day. And I got a pop-up on Saturday, uh, rooftop bar, sub-freezing temperatures in a Michigan winter. And we're going to sell some coats, crew necks, and have some craft beers. So uh, if you guys want to fly in, we got a place to stay, mask up. Uh, we're just going to, you know, we're just going to go right through it and uh, try to fight. But um, you, know, you know who has been helping me a lot with the vintage business? A good friend of ours. His name is Zach Tracy. Ring any bells to you guys? I remember I mean, only, a, a long time ago. Only the most handsomest dude alive. I mean, no big deal. Back to back DC's most handsomest man. I believe it was 2012 and 2013. Uh, it, but that, dude, Somehow it. Mike Brennan was only in seventh place. <laughs> <laughs> it is Zach's birthday. And uh, do you guys want to share anything with him? Uh, besides the fact that he's, you know, the best looking guy in DC in 2013. Uh, I would like to say that Zach Tracy is maybe our most loyal or within like our uh, gold medal, silver, bronze triumvirate of top listeners of the AUPS podcast during our six years of doing this. Um, so that right there, I mean, that that's got to be on a, on a mantle somewhere. I believe that he is our um, one of our best listeners, but we still have never got in a call in from Zach Tracy. So that's what we need. <laughs> For the 2021 season is a call in from Zach Tracy. And I think that's going to change everything for the world, for Patriot League hoops. It's just going to make it a lot smoother of a process if we got Zach on the phone and talked to AU hoops. I, I support that. He's a beacon of light and we need to leverage that as much as possible. So on that point, you know, I will say this. Uh, Zach's the one that moved into my room in the house. And so he had some giant, obviously some giant shoes to fill. And he took those shoes, man, and he just... 
you know, made a meal of it. Like he's been just Crespo times to like the exponential powers. So Zach, he knows the way around 18 holes. He, he dresses like, like a champ every day. Like he doesn't miss a beat. Like he's, he know he knows what he's putting on from, from socks to shirt to all the, all the details. Like, like he knows what's up. Right. And, um, and uh, you know, just, yeah, he seems quiet at first, but he's like, he's, he's, he's almost disarming, like just so quiet, <laughs> but then he just drops his presence on you and you're like, damn, that's a good fucking dude. So um, yeah, Zach, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, um, you know, I've watched you, I've watched you develop from a, from a, from like a house roommate to this, you know, beast in New York and dude, keep it. Keep it going. You got a lucky girl. She she she's so lucky. She knows it. And I mean, uh, dude, we can only just just be on the outside and just kind of bask in your glow, dude. Dude, not only did he fill your shoes, he put your shoes and made them into some Cole Hans. That's Zach. <laughs> that's Zach Tracy. But Zach, we love you. Uh, couldn't be a better dude in the world. Just want to share our love from the AU Hoops podcast. Sounds Much love. Like, sounds like a, a Saeed Nelson freshman to senior year kind of a development as far as Zach Tracy. And, and, you know, the last thing I would say, he doesn't need to talk. His, that presence <laughs> and those looks, words are, words, words do not hold as much meaning. So Zach, love you, man. Keep, keep listening to the podcast. Hope you're well. And uh, from all of us at the podcast, uh, you know, sending, sending health and, and everything else. Um, Healy, anything else? Nothing else. He knows I love him. Cool. Dude. Well, I just want to, I just want to say that, you know, we are, we are back. Um, obviously there was no point really in doing a podcast or anything when we had no idea what might be <laughs> happening with this college basketball season, but it does look like AU is going to play games here as soon as January 2nd. So stay tuned for a lot more coverage. Check us out. AUPSpodcast.com. And, uh, and as always, go AU. And Crespo falls off, of course. All right, we out. <laughs>